Financial independence is a destination that not very many people make it to. Some believe that it is impossible, not realistic, or that it just won't work. Others do not even know that this destination exists. Just like with any destination, there are many different ways of getting there. Those of us that share this common dream destination end up getting there in many different ways. If you are looking for a path to financial independence, then you need to watch this video about seven paths to financial independence. So the first and best path to financial independence, in my opinion, is the consistent passive investor. A consistent passive investor just invests a high percentage of their income every month into passive investments, such as index funds. This path to financial independence pretty much fits anyone that has a regular income and that can afford to save a larger percentage of their income. And I think it's gonna be the best path for most people. I personally follow this path, and if you're watching this, most likely it is very possible for you to follow this path. And over a long period of time, you'll utilize compound interest to grow your wealth and eventually reach your financial independence number. The second path to financial independence is the extremely frugal investor. This is just like the first path to financial independence, except you're taking your frugality and your expenses and you're shrinking it down to the very bare minimum. Now there is no formal definition uh, to what is extreme frugality, but I like to put numbers onto things as much as I can. And for extreme frugality, I would consider it where your spending level is about where your country's poverty level is. The federal poverty level is about $17,000 per year for a couple, or about $26,000 per year for a family of four. So if you're spending anywhere around that, really close to that amount, then I would consider that pretty extremely frugal, right? Because that's such a low amount of spending per year. The path is the same. You, are, you just spend a lot less and you still invest a significant portion of your income into passive investments. The third path to financial independence is the side income hustler. So this person spends all of their extra time uh, doing side jobs and earning a lot more money. So right after they get off their regular job, they might go and they might drive for Uber or drive for Lyft, or they might get home and take care of their Airbnb guests. Basically, a side income hustler has many different jobs that usually don't require long-term commitments, but that they can do on their own time. And on their own time, they just earn a little bit of extra money that they can put towards their investments to reach financial independence. Now you have to be careful with the side income hustler because some of the side hustles, they don't actually pay very much when you consider all the expenses that you have in order to do that side income hustling. For example, if you're driving for a rideshare service, you need to take into account how much you're losing on transportation through depreciation, through regular maintenance of your car, and through gas and things like that. So sometimes your per hour earnings can be really low and you might not know it unless you run the numbers. The number four path is the well-compensated professional. So the well-compensated professional is basically someone who makes uh, a lot of money. They usually have a particular skill and offer a very highly valuable service. So this is things like doctors and lawyers, things like that. And usually these people have very high education levels and they also have very high income levels. And therefore it's easier for them to save a significant portion of their income because they are making so much. Now there is no formal definition of a well compensated professional, but I like to put numbers on things. So I would say if you're making $100,000 a year in most places in the country, then you're probably well compensated. Next up on number five, we have the real estate tycoon. So there are many different ways that you can make money in real estate. There are very passive ways and there are very active ways. So the passive real estate tycoon might own a lot of rental properties and just bring in a lot of extra cash flow. If they, if they have enough extra cash flow from their real estate, then maybe they could replace their income entirely with that profit that they make every month. And therefore they would be considered financially independent by utilizing their passive income. On the other hand, on a more active level of real estate investing, you could have fix and flips where these people buy houses at very low prices, fix them up and then sell them for a significant profit. There are many advantages of using real estate on your path to financial independence. One of the most notable is their tax benefits that they offer. So if you're really into real estate, this might be a path for you. Next up on number six, we have someone that utilizes geographic arbitrage. 
and geographic arbitrage is basically just taking advantage of lower prices in a different location. This can be done overseas, this can be done in different states, and this can even be done in just different cities within the state that you live. For example, if you take your money from the US, your United States dollar, and you go to a low cost country such as Mexico and you live there long term, your costs are already significantly lower while your lifestyle might remain at a high level. So utilizing geographic arbitrage just takes advantage of different prices in different places. This can also be done within your own country, such as in the US. If you lived in San Francisco and you made a high amount of money there, and then you have a lot of money saved up, you can move to a lower cost of living area, such as someplace in Texas, and then you could take advantage of the lower costs of everything. Therefore, you could become financially independent by just moving somewhere where the costs are lower. And number seven is the successful creator. So someone that creates something that benefits society, they could become financially independent by simply selling that product or selling that intellectual property. It can be an inventor, they can be an entrepreneur, they can create a product, they can create a service, they can create intellectual property like music and arts, uh, or they could even just create a business and sell that business off. This is probably the most difficult path to financial independence. And if you're going to be a successful creator, you should be doing it not in the hopes of financial independence, but you should be doing it as a way to benefit society. Because the only way that you're going to be a successful creator is if you create something that does benefit society and that society gets value out of. And you will be rewarded for that. Thank you so much for watching this. These are seven paths to financial independence. If you have any more financial paths to independence that I may have missed, please leave them in the comments below. And also, at the same time, let me know which path that you're on or which path that you would like to take to financial independence. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed watching it and please subscribe to the channel. You can click here to subscribe to the channel and get updated whenever I put out a new video about financial independence. At the same time, you can go ahead and click here and you can watch a video that you may have missed that might be really helpful for you.